Mr. Chair, and it's a pleasure to sum up for the SNP in this debate, and I want to thank the Honourable Member for Shipley for his very comprehensive opening. International Men's Day is indeed a significant date on our calendars, um, even though we're a wee bit late with the debate from the 19th of November. But this annual international event is celebrated, celebrated in over 80 countries, including the UK, of course, inaugurated in 1999 in Trinidad and Tobago with backing from UNESCO. The theme for 2018, of course, is positive male role models with the UK theme for this year being making a difference for men and boys and how we can give men and boys better life chances as set out by the Honourable Lady for Motherwell and Wishaw. And we've heard much today about why International Men's Day is so important. The Honourable Member for Shipley and indeed the Honourable Lady for Motherwell and Wishaw set out starkly the taboo of men who are victims of abusive domestic relationships and that's a silence we need to break for both men and women. We've heard about the fact that uh, the biggest killer in the, in the UK, in young men across the UK, is suicide. So it's extremely important that men and boys alike can access the support they need and we've heard much about that today. It's also important that young men uh, and young boys have positive role models to inspire them, not just famous celebrities or sports people, but people within their own families, their own communities, people who are in their own orbit, living good, decent lives. And to that end, I would suggest we need to continue to encourage men to enter the, the, the primary education sector as well as the secondary education sector. International Men's Day must be a far-reaching, a big conversation, celebrating the contribution of men to our families, to our communities, to our country, as well as working to ensure that men are more willing to talk about their hopes and fears, to take more care of their health and well-being, and do more to remove the stubborn stigma that still persists around mental health issues, to continue the conversation that it's okay to struggle and it's not a sign of weakness for a man to ask for help. And it's also about ensuring that it is, a, that it is clear that equality progressing for women does not in any way seek to take anything away from men who are, after all, half of our population. As the Honourable Lady for Edinburgh North and Leith has shared with us today, more equal relationships between men and women would appear to have better health outcomes for men. Now, much has been said today about the, the suicide male e epidemic, and I think it's not an overstatement to call it an epidemic. And the falling behind of young men and boys in education is also a challenge. We also understand the challenges faced by fathers as new parents or fathers separated from their children, as outlined by the Honourable Member for Shipley, as well as a range of other challenges we've heard about today. And I don't think there's any doubt that men feel under pressure to fit roles and behaviour that society has traditionally defined as masculine, not showing feelings, to seem strong all the time. And this, as we know, can lead many men into despair and even damage their mental health, as the Honourable Lady for Coventry North pointed out. And that's a culture we need to change because it doesn't help men. It doesn't help anybody. Men have a shorter life expectancy than women, on average four years shorter. And while this gap is decreasing, it is decreasing pretty slowly. Men also have a higher incidence of heart disease, stroke, diabetes and obesity. They are 14% more likely to develop cancer than women and are 37% more likely to die from the disease. As the Honourable Lady for Motherwell and Wisher reminded us and the Honourable um, Member for Coventry North, the, suic the suicide statistics are, I think, the most concerning. 76% of suicides in the UK are men, and it's the biggest killer of men under the age of 45. And I think that's, that's almost difficult to get your head around. Every single day, about 12 men across the UK kill themselves, and that must demand some kind of response. In Scotland, men are three times as likely to kill themselves as women. The lowest in the UK, but still far too high. In order to tackle suicide, we need to make sure that mental health support is available and that it works for those who need it, as well as encouraging men who need this help to seek it and accept it. We can all agree on that. And this requires a, a, 
quite a tremendous culture change, which I think will take longer than we would like. We know that men are more reluctant to, help, to seek help and are far less likely than their female counterparts to go and speak to their GPs about pretty much anything as the Honourable Lady from Motherwell and Wishaw has outlined for us, and the Honourable Member for Stafford. We know that boys, on average, do worse in post-educational attainment. That means we need to make sure that learning experiences for boys and young men take account of their needs and the ways that they learn, because there is some evidence to suggest that the way that boys and... There's evidence that boys and girls learn differently. As the Honourable Member for Stafford pointed out, young men and young women need to have the opportunities to find their way, to find their place in the world in order to reach their potential, whether they live in the UK or whether they live anywhere in the world. We know that the majority of children in care are boys. In 2017, 55% of the 14,897 14, children looked after in Scotland were boys. And this itself leads to poor outcomes with poor educational attainment. It means a greater likelihood of experience of the criminal justice system. They are more likely to die prematurely and they're more likely to end up homeless. Mr Chair, this is a stark and worrying picture and we need to address it. These are complex and complicated matters, as the Honourable Lady for Coventry North pointed out. But over time... We need to be able to demonstrate to those whom we represent that we are mindful of these issues and we are actively seeking to address them. And we're seeking to address them together. These are not party political issues. They are issues about the society in which we live and how we can work to make it better. How we can make these statistics relating to men better for all our sakes. And I want to pay tribute, Mr Chair, to... Um, two men's sheds which have sprung up in my constituency. There's one in the three towns of Salcoats, or Drossen and Stevenston, and there's one in the Garlock Valley servicing Beath, Kilryan, Beath, Beath Kilburnie and Dolry. And these men's sheds, which I'm sure are springing up in constituencies across the UK, offer support, friendship and skill sharing run by volunteers, welcoming all men aged 18 and above. And I've seen firsthand the camaraderie and the friendship that these men's sheds foster and they do nothing but good for the men who choose to attend them. But what damages men, what damages all of us, sorry, what damages men damages all of us, it damages our society. Men are an integral part of all our lives, since we all are fathers, husbands, brothers, sons. Advancing the rights of women is not about doing men down. It's about ensuring that we can all reach our potential, regardless of our gender, men and women together. International Men's Day cannot be about setting genders against each other any more than International Women's Day should be about that, because that doesn't help anyone. It's a, it's a very important day, I think, to celebrate that all men contribute and have contributed to our countries, our societies, our communities and our families, as well as recognising the particular and sometimes unique challenges that men face. And I agree with the Honourable Member for Shipley that men should be treated equally to women. And I want to reassure him on that point. That is actually all that women want, as the Honourable Lady for Edinburgh and, and Leith, North and Leith pointed out. So that's why I'm pleased, Mr Chair, to have participated in this debate and look forward to hearing the Minister's thoughts on this.